Welcome back to the Papa Meat Channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on and sit on down. You know, today I downloaded Bolt Gun, which is that Warhammer Doom ripoff thing, but it looks really fun. I mean, it looks awesome. And I thought to myself, God, you know what I haven't, let me, let me ponder my thoughts. You know what I haven't done in a long, long time? Is watch the Doom movie. So I watched the 2005 Doom movie, which does not hold up. I mean, I was watching it. It's not even like funny bad. There's some Marvel quips. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has a Semper Fi back tattoo. And and at the end of the movie, he does say, Super Five, mother which is pretty cool. But uh, it's like a very Marvel quippy, boring set, abomination. But you know, the guy, uh, what's his name? He's, he was in Dread. He's Butcher from The Boys. You know, oh, are you, you, f whatever. Butcher, he's in it. I like him. It was weird. I was, I, I, I went away with it and I was like, oh God, man, I no wonder I haven't watched the Doom movie in so long. It's so forgettable and bad. But as I was scrolling through Amazon, I saw Doom Annihilation. And I was like, what? Apparently, <laughs> 15 years after the first Doom movie, they made a sequel called Doom Annihilation. <laughs> wow. I was so intrigued. I was like, I have to watch this. I have to see what's going on because I have not heard of anybody. I'm pretty sure anyone, not a single soul, talk about Doom Annihilation before. So I had to watch it. And lo and behold, it was terrible. Today's video is sponsored by Sunday for Dogs. Sunday for Dogs is a fantastic brand that's trying to make sure that your dog, your little puppers, gets the best ingredients to keep them healthy and active at no matter what age. I swear to God. Founded by a veterinarian and made with 100% human grade ingredients, you can feel good about your pet having a bowl of Sunday. And your typical kibbles, they're gonna have all kinds, like up to 30 different kind of synthetic ingredients. It's basically like giving your dog fucking Taco Bell. I mean, 30 different ingredients of Taco Bell in your normal kibble. That's something you're not gonna find in Sunday. We made the switch to Sundays because little crawdad here kept getting all kinds of nasty gas because of the terrible shit she was putting into her body. Isn't that right, crawdad? Yes. That is correct. But after doing some research, and thankfully they hit me up, Sundays actually was a great, nice, healthy way to give my dog a nice, balanced diet that actually cut out all the nasty gas that was coming out of her putrid little asshole. So for Sundays, I always say, thank you for that. Get 35% off your first order of Sundays. Go to sundayfordogs.com slash papa or use code papa at checkout to get 35% off your order. It's time to make the change to Sundays for dog food. Thank you Sunday for Dogs for sponsoring the video and back to the video. First off, I think they made the first Doom movie in 2005 because I want to say, shooting from the hip, refused to look this up. I think Doom 3 came out around that time on the Xbox, which that one was kind of like a spooky, it was supposed to be a little more spooky and less gun-ho, like spray and pray kind of vibe. So I was wondering if the movie was trying to fit that aesthetic to appeal from the newest game, but then Doom 2016 came out and then I think Doom Eternals came out in 2019. So I wonder if they were trying to capitalize off the new hype of the new game. But from what I've researched as well, the makers of id Software, they were like, we have nothing to do with this, <laughs> with this movie. And after doing even more research, what's the guy's name? It's like Tony G -G 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 -Gallo. G -G -G Gigolo. Tony Gigolo is quite the interesting man. He takes movies that are like pre-existing IPs and makes like straight to DVD movies of them. And that's what this movie is as well. I think Doom Annihilation went straight to DVD and then I think Netflix bought the rights to it or whatever, but who the f I mean, I don't know. He got like $12 for it, I don't know. But Tony Gigolo, very infamously known for SWAT under from 2017. He also wrote Death Race 2, Death Race 3, Inferno, Death Race Beyond Anarchy. Oh, look at that. He, he wrote a movie called Timber Falls, but in Brazil, it was released as Wrong Turn 2. In Mexico, it was released with the title Wrong Turn 3. What the fuck? Really? What the fuck? That's interesting. He's worked on some big stuff though. He was set production. He was a set, he was on set production of Heat, Jingle All the Way, Dante's Peak, Liar Liar. What the fuck? He was an actor in Lewis and Clark, the Superman show. And he was also in Kicking and Screaming, but it wasn't the Will Ferrell one, it was something else. Okay, wow, okay. Well, Tony Gigolo, the champion, he rises to the occasion. He's truly, it's a, it's a truly Herculean task. But when I looked it up, I mean, I couldn't see how much the movie cost. I couldn't see anything. All I could see was that the DVD sales were like 2,000 and then he sold like $75,000 worth of Blu-rays. So effectively the movie made 76-ish thousand dollars or whatever and uh, whatever Netflix paid them to be like, please God, let us put more trash onto this streaming platform. Please, would you please, oh God, what's gonna go with Big Mouth? I know. Doom Annihilation. So, you know, I sat back, I cracked my knuckles, and I was really ready. I said, you know what? It's time to embrace Doom Annihilation, which 
<laughs> it's not very good. So let's do a nice little breakdown of Doom Annihilation. The movie starts off and we're in a facility. All the sets in this movie are very funny. It kind of looks like, I will say, you know what? The sets look kind of funny, but you got to give them credit. In the Doom 2005 movie, it couldn't be more boring to look at. It's just like great. It's pretty much, you know, with any other sci-fi movie, everybody just copies the aesthetic of Alien. I think I already went over this, but every movie copies the aesthetic of Alien. No one has differed from it ever. Oh, the Event Horizon. That's what it was. That movie copied it as well. But it's just the same kind of thing. Industrial, weird color schemes to go with it. It's, you know, whatever. But to be fair, Doom was probably inspired by Alien as well. So you could give him credit for that. But basically this movie starts off and we're on a moon called Phobos, which is actually a real moon on, of Mars. And we're at a facility where there is, there's a scientific lab built around the earth. And it looks like a lot of fun plastic rocks. But I, you know what about that? I love that. I love the vibe of this. It's so clearly plastic rocks. And in the center of it, it's a satanic, weird, like ritualistic platform that they're using as a gate or something. I don't know. They're using it as a gate because they're trying to teleport from Phobos to Nevada, which I just thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> I don't know why, but I got an audible chuckle about just being like, we have to teleport to Nevada, just kind of instead of Earth. I don't know. So we start off and there's a test subject and, you know, the guy's like, are you nervous? And he's like, not at all, sir. He looks like Mark Zuckerberg. So you have Mark Zuckerberg sitting there and he's like, not at all. I, I can't wait to teleport to Phobos, or the moon of Mars. It's going to be fantastic. And then I'm going to bring Metaverse to Phobos. It's going to be magical. And as they're doing that, he teleports to Phobos. Everyone's clapping. They're like, yay. And then you get a girl who turns and she's like, oh my God. And Mark Zuckerberg is, he has a gray skin. His fingernails are all long and brutal. He's bleeding black liquid out of his eyes and he does a nice scream. And that's when we get our fucking title card. Doom. <laughs> But, you know, uh, after this little entrance sequence, we're introduced to our, and this is, you have to you have to give him credit. This is right when the Me Too movement was hip hop. It was hopping, 2019-ish. This is gonna be Doom Goes Woke with a female Doom guy. She wakes up from her cryogenic sleep and her name is Joan Dark. Joan Dark. I just, the last name Dark, but also is it supposed to be a play on Joan, Joan of Arc? I don't know. It kind of feels like it's supposed to be that way. Like it's, oh, it's like a holy, like a martyr kind of name, but it's Joan Dark. We find out that they're a couple hours away from Phobos and we get our first introduction of stock rock music. She looks up and it does like a fake, like, it does like a, like a... It's like a fake rock song. It's not a real IP. It's like a stock song. Dun, dun, dun. And it's really fun. And we get introduced to our crazy cast of characters. You know, we have our drunk pilot, the tropey drunk pilot, right? I'm pretty sure that was like Danny McBride. You see that in a lot of different, I'm pretty sure that was in Invent Horizon too. Like, I don't know why it's a trope and, and in Mass Effect, but it's like a tropey thing where it's like, oh, the pilot, I'm just like a redneck kind of like, you know, I like to drink while I fly this plane. It's like that, that kind of trope. But we get introduced to all of the characters. Once again, I don't know, sci-fi movies please for the love of god stop doing this stop introducing all of the characters in a white kitchen they're in there talking whatever and the girl uh joan dark walks in and everybody gets all quiet Ooh, we don't like her i think it's time to leave yeah let's get the fuck out of here basically the only people left in the kitchen after that is joan joan dark <laughs> mrs dark as they say and her scientist friend and it's like a weird interaction they have because you find out that the scientist used to date joan 10 years ago and she was like oh yeah i mean we dated once like 10 years ago for like four weeks and he's like it was more like four months and he takes a sip of his cup and i just i'm, I'm trying to think like would you really care that you dated someone for four months t a decade ago and it's still this awkward it just felt kind of weird but you know it's necessary character building because they have maybe a rocky past i hope that you can overcome that later in the film but luckily after this little fun interaction we cut back to the scientist who was briefing mark zuckerberg before and he says fuck this i'm gonna go through the portal you guys can't stop me and this guy's like you can't go who's gonna do it and he's like i'm gonna go i'm going to do this i'm gonna go through the gate and he goes up and the gate is really funny i forgot to say this earlier but the gate is like this gelatinous 3d effect that they're trying to do but it kind of just looks like a bunch of like it looks like a big thing of like brown gravy stuck in anti like an anti-gravity machine it looks like a bunch of gravy flowing around or like a jelly or something like that and he walks in and uh-oh the whole base the power goes out Ooh. 
there's a lot of themes from this movie that correlate with the first Doom movie. Because in the first Doom movie, you have a lot of the same things. The power going out. You have to, you know, search and rescue mission. Which I guess, is that kind of how Doom... Every time I've played Doom, it's like Doom guy just wakes up and he kind of just kills shit. I didn't know if there's any ever any objective, really. But that starts a whole shit show. And uh, as they walk through, a girl... Uh, I think she sees a monster. She mostly just turns to the camera and she just screams. But we don't know what she sees. Who knows what horrors lie beyond from the Doom game? What would be something that would be funny to come out of the Doom portal for the girl to scream at. The scariest thing for me would be KSI's laugh. Been watching a lot of Sidemen. KSI steps out of the portal just laughing. You can't understand anything he's fucking saying. The girl just screams. Or just another boxing promotion. Another YouTuber boxing promotion thing that I have to fucking see all over the internet. That would make me scream, dude. I'm getting off topic. Basically, we're sitting there and as they're pulling in, the captain of the, uh... <laughs> The captain of the ship it has like a little iPad. It kind of looks like a Toshiba handy book or something like that. You look, the little off-brand iPad. And he's sending a video message to his wife and his daughter. And he's just like, don't worry, I will come home. I can't wait to see you. It's been so long. I'm going to be home. And it's just like a giant waving flag that's like, he's probably not going to come home, I imagine. <laughs> But now we start getting into the meat of it. Basically, the Marines are going there to help out, but then they find out that when they get there that the power is almost out, and they have only 90 minutes before the reactor explodes. Basically, they have an hour and a half to figure out what the fuck they're supposed to do. Convenient timing for an hour and a half long movie. I thought that was kind of nice. Usually in these movies, it's like, we only have four minutes, and then an hour and a half movie goes by, and you're, it just it doesn't really add up. The math isn't there. You know, they start looking around the Phobos base, and you get some nice Doom callbacks with a little yellow room. You get a blue room. You get a green room. Dope Doom callback. So if you're a Doom head, you might like this part. And it's just funny to note that when they're walking around with the guns and they're actually all positioned up, it did make me think of the Doom 2005. All the tropes. Your fearless but misunderstood leader. Woman 1. Random Man 2. Insufferable, supposed to be funny guy. Overtly religious or serious figure. And large black man with large gun. Those are the nice tropes that we follow. I feel like that happens a lot in a lot of different movies too like any kind of action movie that's usually the squad that's usually the kind of like gang that they have i don't know so as they're walking through they get attacked by a scientist who turned into a zombie but he's blue which it, it was kind of distracting to me because when we saw mark zuckerberg at the beginning he was gray and it looked kind of you know i mean for like a little straight to dvd netflix movie thing you know like a gray zombie that looks kind of cool but he's like blue and he looks like he was dipped in the like a toilet of a of like an airplane he also looks like the monster from the descent movie he looks like that, except they're blue, and he's like a zombie, but they're, it's a bit weird. I know in the Doom games, they do zombie stuff, but in both the first and second, and, and, and the Doom 2005 movie and Doom Annihilation, they focus way too much on the zombie aspect of it. I feel like Doom is more known for, like, what, the Coca Demon thing, and, like, other big, like, actual hell-looking creatures. We don't ever really get that, but, you know, there's still more to come. But as they're attacked by this zombie, you know, they start getting attacked by hordes of zombies, and, like, almost all of the fucking crew dies here. We just got introduced to the action and almost all of the crew were getting attacked and it turns into a fun little action sequence of people getting killed and one of the zombies that killed his name is John Carmack. Remember Adrian Carmack's the maker of the game? It's pretty funny. Dude! <gasps> huge Doom callback! I'm such a huge Doom head. That's awesome. Don't ever do that. I, we've said that before but like, this is my son, John Carpenter. You like look at the camera and they do. That's for me and you. Big action sequence, people dying. And one of the funny parts was, remember the callback of the captain being like, baby, I'm gonna come home, I swear. He's being attacked by some zombies and they're about to help him, but he shoots the handle to the door and it closes and they can't open it and he just gets eaten to death. And I feel like the way that they set up the movie is I feel like you probably could have, uh, probably could have gotten saved there, but he just, he's kind of just like, fuck it, I'm dead. <laughs> shoots, <laughs> shoots the door handle and he's just like, nah, I'm good, I'm not coming back actually. I fucking lied to them, I'm not coming back. I never planned on coming. Back. But luckily, they find three survivors on the giant Phobos factory, which is the scientist. His name's like Betruger or something. I don't know. I didn't know if it was supposed to be a play on Betrayer. I don't know. I mean, you have Joan Dark and Betruger. I didn't know if it was like tongue in cheek. I'm not sure. You have Betruger. You have Victoria, which was like a girl that was helping Betruger earlier that he was like rizzing on earlier in the film. And then you have a priest, which I thought was. I actually, I was laughing pretty hard when I saw the priest. It was just so out of left field that like in the future in a sci fi movie, that there would actually be a priest on the, you know, sci-fi spaceship moon base. Luckily, Christianity really pulled through in the future. We're still, in the future when, it, you know, we're be able to fly to Mars with ease. We still at least have religious. We still got our boy JC upstairs. 
Love you, big dog. And basically from here, we get a little more exposition. We find out that Betruger and the government has been researching these spooky gates on the Phobos moon and in Nevada for 30 years. And they think that some of this alien technology is some of the reasons why the pyramids were built. They actually say that in the movie. Kind of crazy that they actually said that. So they think that alien technology has been brought from Phobos to Earth, but the uh, priest or the chaplain or what the fuck you want to call it, he says, no, it's a portal to hell. And I was like, oh, that's why they have the priest so they can come to that conclusion. Because nobody else would just be like, this is pr this is hell, right? Can we all agree that this is hell? So you know what? I like the priest, dude. I thought that it was nice. I'm glad he was there to be like, aliens? Yeah, the fuck right. We're going through hell. Luckily though, this pisses Joan Dark right the fuck off. And she's like, we're getting out of here. And they start to go back to the ship. But once they go back to the ship, they get attacked by not zombies, but imps. Whoa. So, you know, take that 2005 Doom movie. In the 2005 Doom movie, there is only, there's literally two monsters. There you have, the people are turning into kind of zombies, but then they keep transforming into like, just like a weird alien hybrid thing. And then there's like a weird wheelchair Let monster. Go. In this movie, we got blue demons and we got imps and they do shoot poorly composited 3D fireballs, which makes them, th these fights much, much more fun to watch. But basically you find out that their ship, the hell of the gate manipulated the AI to their spaceship and it won't let them leave. So now they have to actually go and turn the power back on to the whole Phobo station to use the gates to return to Earth. And they have to do that in 30 minutes or it's, they'll die. They kind of walk back immediately with ease back to the reactor. No imp attacks yet, but as they're getting ready to turn on the reactor and turn the power back on, Betruger starts talking about uh, why people don't like Lieutenant Joan Dark, which she was recently promoted. I want to say that. She's recently, everybody was kind of congratulating. Hey, congratulations on the promotion, Lieutenant. Thank you. Appreciate that. Betruger sitting there and he gives us the nice exposition to why people don't like Joan Dark. And the reason why people are so off-putted by Joan Dark was that due to a lack of accountability, or what the fuck was it? What is Joan Dark let terrorists free due to poor judgment. Joan Dark allowed terrorists to go free due to poor judgment. I don't know what that really means. What I, th it kind of feels, so people probably had to die or something had to happen. I don't know what kind of terrorist it was. I think that probably when they were writing the script, I bet you it was kind of like racy or something. So they decided to be like, ah, cut out the specifics. It's just terrorists because it, it just, it's a terrorist thing. So you get this like really weird ambiguous terrorist plot thread thrown in really late in the movie, like an hour and 10 minutes into an hour and 30 minute long film. And uh, that's the reason why people didn't like her. But the most perplexing thing though is if that happened and she caused like innocent lives to be lost, why would she be promoted to Lieutenant? How did she get this promotion? I don't know. And I'm desperately curious to know. There's no flashback sequences. There's nothing to allude to the terrorist act that she let upon the world. So I'm very confused by that. <laughs> Lo and behold, wow, what a huge plot twist. Betruger's evil. He went through the gate and he turned into a monster. But he's not really a monster, he's just evil. But he, I mean, you could tell that he's like a fucking scumbag from the beginning. So you're like, oh, there's the reveal. He shanks Veronica, the girl that he was trying to finger fuck earlier, and runs off and locks the Marines to, in the room to get attacked by imps. And boy, oh boy, do they get attacked by imps. And only two people are left, Joan Dark and her scientist ex-boyfriend from 10 years ago, because that's definitely important in this movie. But luckily enough, they're, they're starting to regroup and they're like, we're gonna fucking kill Betruger and get off this rock. And then she finds the BFG, which if you guys don't know in Doom, the BFG is a really fun big gun. It's big fucking gun. Right? The BFG 9000? Sick. She finds that and the scientist who's like a little pussy, he's like, well, I guess, I, I guess I'll have to shoot your gun then since you have this one. And Lady Doom guy's like, yeah, why don't you fucking, hey, why don't you put your face in my pussy and smell deep so you can know what a real man smells like? But they're, they're shooting their way through the, the corridors trying to get to him. The scientist almost immediately dies. He gets attacked almost immediately. But luckily, Joan makes it up and she's able to push through and find Betruger sitting in the station near the gate. He's getting ready to open it. They have some fun dialogue, or not really. They talk for a second. Joan shoots the scientist, but he's just like, you can't kill what's already dead, which I feel like I've that has to be like one of the most overused lines in movie history. And he force pushes her into the, the open gate. So she's in hell now. And as she's in hell, hell there is a horde of zombies and imps and there's this giant floating Jesus, god who's what basically her. like we're going to reclaim what we've made we gotta take back what's rightfully ours and then joan just point blank shoots him and he explodes 
You have like a giant hell monster and she's just like, okay, shoots him once he dies. And then it looks like hundreds, if not thousands of imps and demons are crawling after and we get some nice shots, whatever. You know, some really cool slow-mo action sequences. But luckily a portal is opening up behind her. She throws off some grenades. It explodes a big green explosion. Uh, and it pushes her into the gate into Nevada. She's the first person to successfully go through the gate. And she's like, close it up. It's hell. It's hell. And the people immediately grab her and sedate her. They're like, shut the fuck up. We're going to use this. This works. I mean, this could totally, you know, basically they're, they just don't give a fuck. She's like, there's some horrible evil shit. And they're like, we don't care. Can you think about how people are going to be traveling around the universe with this technology? Ooh. And I don't think that they had any budget to do this, but basically the movie ends with the sounds of demons coming out of the portal. We don't see them. We just hear the sounds of it and it cuts to black and i think it's supposed to be like a cliffhanger because nothing happens with petruger he just kind of uh he's just there still i don't really know what happened to him all i know is that this doom annihilation movie i have to give it credit i preferred it i honestly i probably preferred it more to the first doom movie even though the rock does have a simplified tattoo on his back and he does say simplify motherfucker which that alone is really funny at least the first doom movie it was trying to be so serious and so cool that it came off so fucking lame and the set pieces in this movie are so cheap looking but are so inspired that it makes it so much funner i really need to go through and see what other kind of video game adaptation to movies there are i've heard that there's a lot of bad ones i mean the first one that comes to mind is like resident evil and kind of how crazy those movies get but doom annihilation didn't have the budget but god damn it it had the heart except you know joan dark come on what's going on with that also how hard is it to just make a doom movie where it's just the doom guy and the thing too is i know that they they have the whole crew because when you have the whole crew you can kind of go through and you can build suspense with people getting picked off one by one you can kind of build the suspense and you're building characters revealing a story but could you not just have an ace plot where it's doom guy going through and killing shit trying to reach maybe your b plot which is scientists who are trying to unveil some mystery or something and then throw all the cool demons and stuff not one coca demon it's the coolest thing big ball of meat with a giant eye where the fuck is he at in this movie at least you had the people throwing fireballs that didn't happen in doom 2005 doom annihilation already wins because of that there's at least a fireball oh and there's also a scene they do a callback to the chainsaw both movies do chainsaw moments because you wouldn't be doing without a chainsaw but it is funny in doom annihilation she grabs a chainsaw but she doesn't have to turn it on she just grabs it and it immediately turns on and then like they do like a scan of it and it's like oh what is this barbaric technology and it's like it's a chainsaw what i don't think you're i mean are chainsaws completely obsolete now i don't know it, it is weird that it's just randomly in this plant room there's just like walls of plastic plants and there's just like there's like a chrome chainsaw in there which you know what i think that's kind of rad what are we doing? What are we trying to do? Nitpick everything? I don't think so. So Doom Annihilation, I would be so curious if any of you have actually seen this movie. For a video game adaptation, I mean, you know, could have been worse. I, I have to give it credit. It, it is better than, it's better, it's funnier, it's dumber, and it's more entertaining than Doom 2005. Doom 2005 was just a slog. You have like that one cool moment at the end where there's like the first person shooter part of it. And you kind of just think to yourself, why isn't the whole movie like this? I kind of just want the whole movie to be like this, but it's not. So it's kind of a huge fucking drag. But Doom Annihilation, Annihilation. Will Tony Gigolo ever make more sequels to video games? What about us, the Assassin's Creed movie? That flopped in theaters. Can we see Tony Gigolo make a uh, straight to DVD or Blu-ray or Netflix version of that? I hope so. What about Prince of Persia? Was that a Disney movie? I can't remember. Maybe I'm thinking, I don't know. But Prince of Persia? Huh? How about Death Race 7? I want to see Tony Gigolo just do a Fast and Furious film. I feel like he would do very well at that. Tony Gigolo, if you see this, contact me. I'm not going to specify why. I just need you to contact me. <laughs> it's like some big secret. You actually don't don't contact me. I don't really have anything to say to you. I'm very curious if this is going to be an ongoing trend though with every new Doom game. Are they going to try to release a movie? Because I would be, one of these days, they're going to just knock it out of the park and it's going to be absolutely lovely. And I can't wait for it. Because Doom, it's so simple and so stupid and that's what makes it so fun. You have to capture that on screen somehow. We need to have it. Especially now because there's like all kinds of like weird swords and shit in play. It'd be so fun. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. Doom Annihilation. What the fuck are you supposed to do? We'll see. I will say, I, here before too long, I found out about you a bull i think that's the director's name he did house of the dead which is supposed to be terrible he also did alone in the dark which people say is arguably one of the worst movies made but they say it's the worst video game adaptation so i'll have to be sure and check that out if you guys also have any recommendations for some funny video game movies please send it along you a bull also did dead or alive which is the volleyball big titty movie game thing so <laughs> we'll see i don't know thanks for watching guys i'll see you next time peace